Alrighty, welcome back everyone. Last time we were here, we talked about layers. We talked about fill layers and paint layers. We talked about the brush and the eraser, um, all those different tools. In this one, we're gonna talk about masking and folders and how that works. So to begin, you can see we're already in our texture tab. We're already here. We're already in our layers. So the first thing I'm gonna do and the easiest way that I know how to affect masks is if you come up here, click your paint bucket, which is a fill layer. I'm gonna go choose Albedo. I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, sorry, right, uh, alt click and that'll select just that. I'm gonna go ahead and choose green, get like a close to the color that I'm looking for, more of like an olive, darker olive drab, okay, cool. So now this fill layer has affected this entire mesh and I don't want it to. I basically just want the grenade base to be affected. So I can go in and hand paint it or I can do something super easy like a mask. So if you come up here, you can see there's a square with a circle in the right hand side under layers. I can click it and I can add a black mask. You can also right click, no, nope, I'm sorry. Let me go ahead and delete that so we can go back. You can also right click, add mask, and then choose black, okay? Now we have a black mask. Now up here, usually you should get a drop down here, but it's because we're in selection tool, so you need to make sure you're in brush. Now that I'm in brush, you can see white is the selection and you can only paint white and black on a mask. So you can slide this down to change the, the value or you can hit X and it'll completely invert it or this little button right here. Okay, so now that I have that, I can actually just paint, boom. You can see now what is coming through is what is painted white. So this is considered a black mask and you are painting in information, okay? You can also do the exact same thing, but opposite, right click, add mask, add a white mask. Now everything's green. Now if I go into my paintbrush again, come here, you can see white, paint white on white, nothing happens. Invert it to black, and now I paint, you can see I'm now erasing that green layer because everything is coming through because it's white, but now the black is gonna paint it away. And if I wanted to adjust this and make like a gray, you can see it's a different color. I can also make it a little more, so it's a little bit more, there you go. You can see that a little that it the way that the mask is working is letting some of that through, but not all of it. It's got a little bit of a green hue in it. Okay, let's go ahead and delete. So say that I just want to paint this. Um, right click, add mask. Go ahead and hit black. Say I just want this to be painted. There's a couple options we have. Um, there's a lot of ways to do this, but uh, I'm going to cover a couple really easy ways. A hard way to do it is just paint the whole thing. Increase your brush size and paint it kind of a pain, you'll get some bleed over. You can use your selection tool or your smart selection tool. You can select this um, or use your square and select just parts of it and do it. Um, I wouldn't suggest that. Um, another easy way is you hit fill right here and you have different options. You have tolerances, um, solid, anti-aliased. You have contiguous mesh, which will, which will select a specific whole mesh, so click. So it happens to work in this instance, which is lovely. But sometimes you'll have one mesh, um, but you don't want everything to be the same color. So what you could also do is UV, and I've already UV'd it so that the UV space is on its own. So what you can do is click that and it'll also, and it'll also um, fill that. So you have two options. You can choose by mesh or you can choose by UV island. Okay, so those are both options. Another option that we have, which really makes life a little bit easier, is in here, what I can do is if you come to the right, you can click this little thing that looks like a watch. It says add new input process layer, click it. You can see we have curvature, direction, dirt. These are like your procedurals in uh, Substance. Uh, procedurals are to the right in Marmoset right here. But for now, that's, a, that's for another time. Click color selection. So color selection is gonna be up here. You're gonna see your new list and it's gonna say color selection, source, material ID, you can do group, object, UV island. So you're able to do a lot like the fill, but we're gonna choose material ID. If you remember when I baked, if you come back over to scene, you can see that the input maps that it's reading has a material ID, which actually has the colors. Um, so the way that I did that when we first talked, when I first imported everything was I had the low poly grenade and then I had the high poly grenade and the high poly grenade each. I put a new material on each component and that those colors for those materials are going to allow me to mask out, which makes life really easy, especially in more complex 
um, complex objects. This is not complex, but when you get something that has hundreds of little changes and you don't want to have to hand paint everything, this allows you to drop uh, like full materials on it. So back up here to layer settings, make sure your source is your material ID map, click add new, boom. So what's gonna happen here is the material color associated with the high poly is gonna come through. <clears throat> so, okay, so you're gonna see this. So this is a really easy way to select different things, especially in complex. So all you have to do is choose the color that you want, bam. No. You also have a threshold, so if I turn that threshold up or down, well, it's not working, there's not enough that's similar, but usually if this is like, uh, like a bright pink and this is like a dark pink, uh, you can adjust the threshold so it'll only cover this and not this. Depends on how many material colors you have. Um, but you can see that it actually has completely done the UV island. It's done a little bit of dilation. Um, it's kind of pressed out a little bit, which is fine. That's not an issue to mask out further like that, um, just in case it's too close to the seam or something happens and UV shift. So this is a good way to select, okay? So another thing that we can do is say if I want to delete this, delete this. See, that's a lot of work to always put a mask on every single layer, okay? Um, so I may not want to, I may not want to do that. I may want to just edit these different layers and use the stack to my advantage. So if I want this and then put dirt and so on and so forth, I don't want to have to mask out this every time. That's a lot of work. So what you can do is you can actually actually add a mask to a folder. So if you come up here to your layers, click the little folder icon, it's going to be called a group. We're going to call this G base folder okay now from here what I can do is I can actually come up to your um, add a mask add a black mask okay now that I'm in my black mask I can actually add a uh, I'm sorry I might yeah add a black mask I can go ahead and either paint it in or do any of the options I can do the ID map I can do the fill and I can paint in UV island boom and there we go so what I can do here now is everything that I want to work on inside that base, I would basically just drag and drop into my folder, okay? Well, let's go into our fill layer, paint layer, base grid. Hold on one second, let me troubleshoot this. folder sorry so there's um let me go back and, and show you what happened there so what you want to do is when you drag into this you have the option to drag into the selected mask or you have the option to drag into the folder okay um, what I did is I accidentally dragged it into the mask which means that it's just gonna become a white black and white mask it's gonna be affecting the masking itself as you can see this fill layer change to just adjust the mask okay um, so we don't want that it still retained its information. What you want to do is you want to drag it into the folder icon itself. You'll see it highlight, boom. Now you can see that this base color, this base color is actually just affecting inside the folder. And then if I were to click over here into the mask, you can see that is where my mask selection is going to come from. So everything that I build in here, say if I want to add, uh, like a dirt or I wanted to hand paint something um, and I will show you that now. I'm going to go ahead and click a paint layer and this paint layer, let's go ahead and albedo just so we can see it. I'm going to make it bright red, okay? But you can see the red is coming through. Um, so what I can do here is yet again drop it in here. You can see that it automatically removed it up here because that information is not there but that information is in here. If I were to drag this underneath you can see it goes away because it's underneath in the layer stack, okay? So above it, it'll come through. Oh, it actually jumped out. Let's see, boom, drop it. You can see that since it's above this in the layer stack, it's actually gonna overwrite that, okay? And there's different blendings that you can do to affect that, um, but it is inside the folder, which is allowing it to mask out so it's not coming up here, even though it is. And if I were to bring this out completely, you can see that since it's under the stack, it's not overriding this, but it is coming here because the masking is not working. Same thing if I were to put it all the way on the top, everything comes through. So you're actually able to do a lot of work without any masks. So instead of having to do multiple different masks, now what I can do is just create a new layer in here, create a new fill layer. 
now that I have this new fill layer, I can just adjust, let's say the color. Let's say I wanna go like a brown. Um, from here, now I don't need to add the mask to only affect this. It is only affected here because it's in the folder with the mask. And then from here, I can add a black mask. A black mask, and then I can add dirt. And you can see it's using the curvature map really, he really heav heavily um, in the ambient occlusion map. But we can adjust those sliders later, and that's something for another video. Um, but for now, uh, it, that kind of stuff just makes sense. Let me delete that. Let me go ahead and delete that. So in this video, we discussed masking on individual fill layers. We talked about white masks and black masks. We had talked about how to apply a mask easily to the item, whether it be UV, the entire mesh, or through an ID map. We talked about adding masks to folders and then dropping your layers inside that folder to simplify your workflow. Well, thanks for stopping by. Next time, we will be talking about destructive versus non-destructive workflows. So we will be talking about paint layers versus fill layers with masks. So you have the ability to go back in time and edit anything that you want, which will make your workflow uh, much, much easier and the ability to edit at any time. Awesome. Thank you.